Unless you've been living under a rock for the last bit of time, you'll have noticed on the news and whatnot, in among all the fear-mongering BS, that a new telescopy was launched by NASA. NASA scientists are one step closer to unlocking the secrets of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope completed its final deployment sequence just yesterday. The James Webb Telescope, which does look a bit like a venomous Australian lizard, or the Pope. And I'm going to tell you how this telescope could prove, scientifically, that we live in a multiverse. If you've seen my videos before, then you might have some idea about what the multiverse is. Because we, on this channel, talk about the uber conspiracy of conspiracy theories. The simulation theory. Which is like the number one bloody thing we talk about here. In fact, I talk about living in the matrix more than I do about James Corden and how he's a massive you might be sat there, gormlessly wondering what the flipping multiverse even is. Okay, let me boil the multiverse theory down to the simplest possible form. Multiple universes. Multiverse. That exist alongside this one, what you are currently inside. It's not infinite, although it just appears infinite to us. Because we got tiny brains and that. Well, you have. I haven't. Mine's massive. Almost too big, if anything. But here's the ting! The multiverse idea isn't just some kleptomaniac's idea dreamt up by some scientist to get a billion squid in funding. Which I know they do. No. This was the last theory published by Professor Stephen Hawking. What do you mean you don't know who he is? It's this guy. Your theory of a donut shaped universe is intriguing, Homer. I may have to steal it. Um, you've stated that you believe there could be an infinite number of parallel universes. Does that mean that there is a universe out there where I am smarter than you? Yes, and also a universe where you're funny. Okay. All right. Even if you don't really understand the multiverse, you will have come across it in films and popular culture, like the latest Spider-Man films, where they tied up having three different Spider-Man actors, using the format of a multiverse. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland. Tobey was my favourite. By using the idea of the multiverse to have different Spider-Mans connecting in one universe before buggering off to their own. They used the idea of the multiverse to have different Spider-Mans connecting in one universe before buggering off back to their own. In fact, there was two Spider-Man films about the multiverse. An animated one as well with Miles Morales into the Spider-Verse, where lots of different Spider-Mans team up. My name is Miles Morales. I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. You ever hear of the Super Collider? You're gonna love this. Dimension opening now. Kid, listen up. This fry is your universe. It's soggy, it's weird, it's gross. And this delicious normal fry is my universe. Hey guys. Who are you? I'm Gwen Stacy. I'm from another, another dimension. How many more spider people are there? Hey fellas. Hello. This could literally not get any weirder. It can get weirder. Okay. We need to get back to our universes. Bender Ditch Cumber Sandwich playing Doctor Strange, where he plays an enigmatic weirdo. That's hardly fair, is it? I mean, he barely has to act. And says to Spider Man, and I quote, the multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little, which is a bigger cop out than, and it was all a dream. Bunch of flipping wet willies, the writers of Marvel anyway, sitting in their man dungeons all day, playing Dungeons and Dragons, jerking off to odd anime, growing neck beards and arguing about which titties they'd hypothetically jerk over. NERDS! So, because films and that are doing it, it means the normal little plebs, like you, start getting interested in it, don't ya? And watching these videos about it, and that's why you're here now, in it. But I bet you're still confused, aren't you? This is what Wikipedia says is the multiverse. Cut to me at the desk then, idiot. The multiverse is a hypothetical group of multiple universes. Together, these universes comprise everything that exists. The entirety of space, time, matter, energy, information and the physical laws and constants that describe them. The different universes within the multiverse are called parallel universes. Look, if you still don't bloody get it, just watch Rick and Morty. I don't know what to do! Oh, crap! I don't know what to do! Oh god, now there's three of them! We're outnumbered! You believe this is the only universe. There's not just one universe. There's a multiverse. Want to hear my little theory about the multiverse? Ooh! Bet you do. I reckon, right, when we dream, we're actually peeking at alternate versions 
of ourselves in different realities across the multiverse. Cause, right, if this is a simulation and our lives are just a giant simulated video game, then it would stand to reason that you would simulate multiple versions of yourself, multiple versions of the game at once. Just like you have multiple servers on a game like Minecraft. We could have the same here. In this life and in each universe could exist a different version of us. A different version of you. And dreaming is peeking into their lives. And black holes are the portals to other multiverses. Like the back door into another video game. Coming up with all these theories and ideas, you would think I was completely mad, wouldn't you? But, I mean, who would have noticed another madman around here? A multiverse is multiple universes. So, we exist on Earth, which is inside a galaxy, which is inside a universe. That's everything you can see. The universe is everything that we can see. It's even the furthest away stars that we can see with our most powerful telescopes. And all the stuff in between that you can't see. And there are likely to be tiny changes to little things, which could be the reason for the Mandela effect. For instance, there could be a universe where Biggie Smalls wrote his famous song to Thomas the Tank Engine, like this. Come on, motherfuckers, come on. Come on, motherfuckers, come on. Yeah. Come on, motherfuckers, come on. Come on, motherfuckers, come on. Release the brainstorm to make your motherfucking brain warm. A strange form, something kind of lyrical. Biggie the bastard. Here is the best motherfudging analogy I can come up with about the multiverse. The multiverse could be like your PlayStation home screen, with all your different games that you own on the screen. Each of those games is a different universe, because each game has its own rule systems. The multiverse of games exists on the hard drive of the PlayStation. And if it was all in VR, I suppose it would be a bit like this. The Oasis. This is the Oasis. It's a place where the limits of reality are your own imagination. You can do anything. Go anywhere. Like the vacation planet. Surf a 50-foot monster wave in Hawaii. You can ski down the pyramids. You can climb Mount Everest with Batman. Check out this place. It's a casino the size of a planet. You can lose your money there. You can get married. You can get divorced. You can, you can go in there. People come to the Oasis for all the things they can do, but they stay because of all the things they can be. Stephen Hawkins and the eternal inflation system. And no, I don't mean inflation like what we've got at the moment, because our governments thought it would be a good idea to print more money than a gullible twat with his first printer. It's a scientific term, ain't it? The late Stephen Hawkins, who was brighter than a lorry load of light bulbs, was proper interested in the multiverse and set out on a mission to prove its existence before he died. What Hawkins did was to make the multiverse a testable scientific thing that could be defended scientifically. In his final paper, before he died, he showed that there are multiple universes occurring all at the same time, and that there are multiple multiverses. Hmm. This is known as the eternal inflation theory. And no, it's still not even this. <laughs> To prove his point, the two science bods had to rely on a thing called string theory, which until I read into it, thought it was something you gave to a cat. Listen, if you want to read his little sciencey paper on the subject, go ahead. Just Google it. I'm not going to regurgitate it all for you, because it'll be about as graceful as a cat with a fur ball, like this. These videos, what I make, is like the gateway videos into a subject. If you find it interesting, you can watch more. I'm like the mocker 
to the beginning of a beautiful relationship with caffeine. Because I'm addicted to it. Now we get to the blasted telescope everyone's jerking themselves silly over. James Webb doesn't sound like a name for a telescope, which are usually called Hubble, or Swift Gamma Ray Burst Explorer, or other names that get you about as wet as a cream cracker. And the James Webb is named after some geezer what used to run NASA. Fancy name in a telescope, Webb. Webb. Oh, nice little callback to Spider-Man from earlier. All right. But how does this new James Webb telescope in the thing prove the existence of the multiverse? Well, if you just shut the fudge up for a minute, I'll explain, won't I, mouthy sod? Tell you what, here's Dr. Brian Soppycox explaining all about what the telescope does. The Webb telescope can look at light that's been stretched, much more stretched than Hubble. And if you want to look far out into the universe, which means far, far back in time, then the further out you look, the further back in time you go, and the more stretched the light. So the web, first of all, is going to look at the formation of the first stars and galaxies. It's also powerful enough to look at exoplanets, so planets around different stars. Now, what is the limitations of a telescope? You can't move it. So with this telescope, you can launch the mother fudger into space to get further into space to see more. It's so powerful that it could capture images of stars that have died out. So it's basically a time traveling mother fudger peeking into the past. I don't really care, to be honest with you, about all the scientific shit. I only really care about what it can do. Because to be honest with you, all that sciencey stuff bores me more than sitting through 10 minutes of The Late Late Show with James Corden. <laughs> All I care about is what it can do. I mean, maybe it could find some little alien fellas and, you know, we could all sit around and have a chat with them and find out what's been going on for the last billion years. Or maybe, if it's powerful enough and it can see that far into space, maybe it can see the edges of James Corden's ego. But this is why it's important. Can it prove that the multiverse exists? Hawkins said that it might not be the only one, that there could be lots and lots and lots of universes just like this one, each with their own laws of physics, their own stars, their own galaxies, their own planets with their own civilizations. Think of it like this entire existence and all of the universes in it being the PlayStation. And each universe is a different video game. Each video game has its own specific rules. Get it? Simple really, isn't it? When you've got a genius like me to break it all down for you. What makes it spookier than an episode of Scooby-Doo is that there could be an exact replica of you in another universe. Saying the same shit I'm saying right now, just in a slightly different way. Obviously they're not going to be as sexy or charismatic as me, but they could have a bloody good go if this telescope can confirm the existence of universes alongside our own, which it's powerful enough to do, it could confirm Hawking's theory which means that universes just like this one exist. Which means there's a very real possibility there is another you out there with a cock on your head. Probably. Oh, and if you watch this video next, it'll take you deeper than Alice on a heavy night out into why we might be trapped in a simulation. Click it then.